I know that that mess would probably cause anxiety for uh, some of you teachers, but I love it when I have days like that with tons and tons of stuff to cut because it means that my parent volunteers and my high school helpers have been busy getting all these wonderful games ready and it means I can change out my math and reading sub soon. So thank you to Greg for all that fun activity stuff from teacherpayteachers.com and to my helpers who have got all that ready but oh, I love new laminated stuff. It's so much fun to make new games for these kids. No, I did not make that for myself. I'm sure a lot of you are thinking that, that this awesome mug is not something I created for myself. And no, I do not think I'm the world's greatest teacher. I love it that students think that way, and I hope that your students give you stuff like that too and think of you as highly as some of my students do. This is actually an awesome mug that one of my kids made for me last year, my little buddy Luke. And check this out. He even drew a picture of me on the other side. How cool is that? So thank you, Luke for the picture of you or of me and the awesome mug. I love this mug. And not just for the reason that it says world's greatest teacher. All right, it is Tuesday, which means it is time for another quick tip from me to all of you. And today's quick tip has to do with all of that stuff that I showed you that I have to cut out from laminating and all of these things that I have already laminated and cut out. Check out all these games. All this stuff is going into my math and reading tubs for my kids to use for learning stations and independent time. Today's quick tip is in response to a question, but I wanted to bring it up today instead of during the Ask Adam Q&A because it really brought up a good point about a quick tip that we can all use in our classrooms. The question was asked about how I'm monitoring what is being done in these groups or keeping track of what the kids are actually learning to know that they're doing it right. Now, that's a great question and I wanted to do it today because I have a great tip for all of you. One of the things that's happening during this time is I am floating around the room. Now I do pull small groups to my table sometimes to work on individual things, but usually it's one of these packets that I'm working on them with, one of the reading tubs, one of the math tubs. So during these tub times, they are leveled tubs. They're working with groups on certain math levels and reading levels, but there are tubs going on back there, right here, over there, back there, everywhere around the room, as you can see in pictures that I've put up previously. So to make sure that all these kids are doing what I expect them to do, and that they're actually learning from this, I do use recording sheets sometimes, and the great thing about some of Greg's stuff from the Kindergarten Smorgasbord and other people that I've used is they include recording sheets in their packs. So a lot of this, like for example, Greg's Donut Pack. He's got recording sheets in there where the kids can do the activities on here, on these cards with dry erase markers, but then also do a sheet for you to turn in. Now, I think that's all great, grand, and wonderful, but as you know, I'm not a person who likes to use a lot of paper. So I put those recording sheets into plastic sleeves sometimes, and they can write it down with their group and then show me. Um, but if there's not a recording sheet that I want to go in on with that, there's a very quick, easy, simple tool that you can use that you all already have. Now that tool that I'm talking about is simply this. Everybody has a phone or a camera. Everybody has a smartphone with a camera or a camera of some sort. If not, you can get cheap digital cameras anywhere. If you can pick up multiple cheap digital cameras, that's even better because then you can put these in different areas around the room. But for now, I just use my phone for this or a cheap camera that I have at home I can bring in. And what I'm talking about is letting your kids or you, if you can, if you don't have time though, teach your kids to do it, letting your kids take pictures of the work that they just did. So for example, this pack from Greg is a donut pack that is addition and subtraction puzzles. Now, I don't need all 18 kids to go sit down and do the puzzles like this for example. Three plus two equals five. I don't need them all to go do that and then write it down. Now, there are benefits to that, don't get me wrong. I, I understand why he puts the recording sheets in there. I think they're great. He does a great job making them. And that's just one more step, I guess, or more repetition for the kids to understand the skill if they're doing it and then writing it. So yes, I do use those sometimes. But again, I don't use a lot of paper, so I don't do them all the time. That's where this tool and this tip comes into play. The kids can all go do these puzzles. And let's say one of them wants to do them by themselves. Let's say my little Johnny is going over and doing these puzzles by himself and he wants me to see that he's done a good job. Well, I'm over here at my table working with a different group and I don't have time before he wants to move on to a new tub to go check that out and check them all. So my kids know that they can take pictures of that. Now, I haven't done this a lot, but I've taken the pictures now. So I go around and I'll take pictures of it. But all these kids, don't kid yourself, they know how to use smartphones, they know how to use cameras. If not, 
show them it's quick and easy. So you can hand them your smartphone. You can say, hey, go take a picture of the work that you just did. Make sure you get it all in the frame. Capture it all so I can see it. And then have them show that to you. Now that accomplishes multiple goals. Number one, they're showing you that they understand the skill without wasting paper and without taking you away from your group. Number two, you're saving a lot of paper. Number three, you are already starting to make a portfolio for that child of individual skills that they have accomplished. Now we all know, as, as you know on my channel, that the kids testing has come up quite a bit. Kids testing is all about a portfolio to show evidence of what the kids can do. And it's just a good thing to have anyway. You can then take all of these things, keep track of them, and right then and there you have pictures and evidence for a portfolio to show what these kids can do. A simple, quick, easy tool to make it even better, have them work in partners and have them take pictures of each other. So if Johnny is working with you know, Isabella in that station, I can say, hey Isabella, let Johnny sit down, take a picture of him with the work. Let Isabella sit down, take a picture of her with the work. And now I know which two students accomplished all of those math puzzles together in that group and I can check that off as a skill that they understand. Now, it's not a test, it's not a formal assessment, it's nothing that I really need to keep record of, but again, when it comes time for portfolios and evidence of what's going on in your classroom, why not let the kids help you capture all those pictures to then use as your evidence in your portfolios. Now, one more thing to add to that, if they are taking pictures of each other, if you use iPhoto on Macs, you know that Faces is a great tool, and if I have all those pictures of Johnny doing all these activities, I can then go in and search for Johnny's face within Faces, and I can put all of his pictures and his portfolio and his evidence all together into one folder. So there you go, guys. That is just a quick, easy tip from me to all of you. Use your smartphone, use your cameras around your room to help document everything that's going on, not just the fun pictures, posed things, but Things like this where the kids can document what they did in a station or a center and then show you when you don't have time to go over and look at all of them and then you have it as a record for them to keep on file. If you have another tip of a way to keep track of evidence and portfolios, things like that, please comment below, let all the teachers know, but share and tag all your teacher friends in this so you can share this quick, easy tip with all of them. That was our quick tip Tuesday. I hope you enjoyed that. Please share, like, tag, everything. You know the drill. I'll catch you guys next time.